As mentioned before, we have invited um, many of inspiring guest speakers to present to us today. And the first guest speaker, I would like to welcome Dr. Johan Stiana. Because of uh, institutional restriction, he could not travel uh, to be here physically with us, but he will be online and he prepared a presentation uh, just for us related to innovation policy um, for sustainability. So Dr. Johan Stena is a team leader and scientific advisor on EU policy in the Joint Research Center in Sevilla. He's currently leading the team on smart specialization and place-based innovation for sustainability. Johan, are you with us? I'm very sorry that I, I can't be with you today. I, I would have loved to. Uh, uh, and um, we still have some restrictions uh, in the European Commission to travel. Um, I, we hope that it will come over soon, but uh, I, I, I tried and I really would like to be with you and also to discuss and, and to learn from the Siri project. Which, uh, it's fantastic. It comes in a very, very interesting and, and relevant moment in time, not, not just for the work that you were doing in the, in the regions with your new strategies, but also in the reflection that we are having in the European Commission uh, what we can learn from, from uh, uh, almost 10 years now of smart specialization strategies and, and um, how we can adapt it to, to the new kind of transformative innovation policy where uh, responsibility with a purpose uh, is, is now more accepted uh, in, in also in, in policy making. Um, and, and uh, uh, very much so in the European Commission. So uh, I, I, I'm really happy to, to be able to, to speak to you today. I will present a little bit our uh, reflections uh, on, on where we are thinking of, of, of um, what we can learn and how we can go forward that we are doing inside of the TRC to, to, to later on uh, perhaps scale it up. Um, and, and uh, I would also listen and really like to, to learn and, and to take on board the findings that you have had in the Siri project. Uh, it, it's very timely for us. So please uh, take the next uh, slide. Um, when we start to, to think uh, about the, the change, uh, there are several kind of rationale that we were using in, in the GRC and uh, more broadly. Uh, first, listening to science, of course, uh, GRC is very much based on science for policy. Uh, and and uh, also listening to not only the CO2 and the climate change, but uh, more broadly the climate planetary boundaries um, and, and uh, the cost of non-actions. Increasing number of studies there that I'm sure that you know much better than myself. Um, then we also, in public policy making, you know, the economic transitions towards a new energy system, towards sustainability, uh, and towards digitalization is already happening, even if we don't uh, want it or, or not, you know. And, and the, the, the policy, the public policy, has to respond to this. Um, and the Green Deal is, is Europe's, the EU's response, both to accelerate but also to steer the transition towards public good uh, and leaving no one behind because they are, uh, as you know, uh, transition costs, of course, and, and, but the transition costs, we believe, will be much higher if we don't do anything at all. Um, there is also, a, you know, it's a matter of, of return on investment somehow. If, if, we are investing uh, more in the EU than we, we've ever done before, historically. Uh, it's ten times more the Marshall Plan. Uh, and, and if we invest so much money and we even borrow money to invest, we have to really make sure uh, that we get the best out of it. And the best out of it is also for a purpose, uh, like you are working on. And there are many uh, challenges and, and hurdles on that. Uh, synergies is one of them, no? And as you know, the last time is to learn and improve, uh, building on what we have, but uh, moving forward in the evolution. And that is also 
why we would be very interested to learn also from the CRI uh, um, findings that you have had and, and, and your experience. Please, the next slide. The way we are thinking of it in, in, in DRC and, and perhaps a little bit beyond um, is that uh, there are the four building blocks, uh, we call it S4 because we, we focus on sustainability, which in, in the sense of the Green Deal and in the sense of the SDG that you mentioned before. Um, and, and this is, of course, a voluntary process, a voluntary upgrading process. It ha it's not compulsory, it's not linked to any regulation or, 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 or uh, what regions need to achieve now in, in terms of enabling conditions. Uh, so it's, it's completely voluntary, it's bottom-up. Um, we believe that uh, uh, the, the kind of pillars that we have uh, uh, in smart specialization are still valid. Uh, but when you go into them, uh, there are specific challenges that, that if we have a purpose-oriented uh, uh, policy. So in the governance, it, it puts a lot of uh, stress on governance. Uh, it changes a little bit the way of thinking in terms of strategies. Um, the entrepreneurial discovery process is not only the beginning to, for the policy formulation, but also continuously, and, and that has not been so prominent uh, uh, that we have seen from the past. And the learning and the policy learning in this context will be a little bit broader. Uh, but I will go more into detail on these four building blocks. Uh, and when I've done that, I will uh, stop the, uh, the, the, the speech. Uh, and very much like to, to listen to your questions and, and also learn from you. Um, so please, the first slide, the next slide. So the first item, the first building blocks is governance, of course. We, we believe that the key is in governance. Uh, uh, for uh, all kind of, you know, you can work at regional level, at urban level, at the community level, at the uh, national level or at EU level, governance is, is, is key. Um, and, and there are three things that we think that are relevant here. The first, uh, and they're all tricky, of course. The first is the whole of governance approach. So, um, somehow, uh, how do you overcome these silos? Uh, when you work on, on, on responsible research innovation, when you work towards a purpose, um, you, you need many times to work uh, across uh, uh, departments. So you may have a department working on climate policy, another department working on, on industrial policy. H how do you overcome this? How do you work on that? And, and, uh, but it's also very much related to a different role of public um, sector, of public administration. Um, uh, it's more like a, a mission-oriented entrepreneurial, also uh, the civil servant as public entrepreneurs. Um, and, and that is, of course, also a challenge, but a beautiful challenge. Um, the second uh, item inside of governance is to work, to be able to work on a multi-level governance. We, we have all tried that and, and, and it's nothing new, of course, uh, but it becomes even more important uh, in this context uh, and, and also with, with all the funding coming in uh, at very different levels. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure that we get these synergies between policies and investment at different level. We also need to work uh, better uh, and more intensively across uh, regions uh, to create this European dimension, to, to take the value added that we are in the European Union um, not uh, uh, excluding partners, of course, outside the EU. This is a, a, a global approach, as you mentioned. Um, and the third thing, uh, that is not new, but it's just to reinforce that uh, the kind of dialogue, the policy dialogue, uh, with this broader approach has to be broader and more inclusive. And, and especially different actors from civil society, from, from uh, the bottom-up citizens' involvement to, to, to other kind of actors uh, has to be involved on an equal footing uh, as the, the, the public and the private sectors and, and, of course, universities. So these are a little bit the three items there. I'm happy to discuss any one of them and, and, and learn from you. 
the next slide, please. The, the, the second building blocks is the strategy. And, and when you go into this kind of transition, transition thinking, um, we believe that the analysis has to, we, we normally do this kind of SWOT analysis. And we think that when you are working in a moving environment with a transition, the kind of opportunities and threats becomes more important. The threats, for instance, in climate adaptation, we don't have that even on our map, probably, in, in many cases, but, but that will be a key issue for, for many regions and many communities and cities in, in, in a very short time from now. Uh, foresight um, will also become, so new assets, uh, building on, on what you have, but going into new assets, which are the new opportunities that you can grasp in the region from these transitions. Uh, all of a sudden, a, a region that has a lot of sun, because of the, the new energy system, will have a new asset that could be a complete game changer. Um, so this is one of the kind of thinking of the analysis, and, and, and of course, the analysis also have to take into consideration both the supply and the demand, because we have to be broader there. We have to link supply and demand. There, there's a lot of work being done by that. Lead market approach is one of them. The second item here is that we need uh, to translate the overall global uh, concerns that we have in the SDG and, and, and the and, and the Green Deal into bottom-up visions. And these bottom-up visions um, are, are, you know, they have to be somehow creating a traction, a, a real traction. Um, and to do that, we, we have worked a lot upon this before in the Commission, where we worked on a mission-oriented policy. Uh, and, and, you know, how to combine ambitious and realistic vision, how to be communicated in an understandable way, how to make it comprehensive, uh, etc. No? So I think this kind of vision is, is very, very important and it has to be related also, and that's the third point, to the priority settings. Uh, and the priority settings uh, perhaps uh, need, uh, and in many cases, not forcefully to, to focus on one industry or, or, or one sector but be much more cross-sectorial, um, much more focused on systems and how, how uh, we in a region can change a specific system and be perhaps a front-runner of that. And for that, you, you don't need to be on top or, or, or of the RN or science and technology forcefully. You have to be on top of policy experimentation to go into new, a new system. For instance, uh, uh, experimenting what really the new mobility system will look like with a very much open mindset. Um, so these are kind of things that we are reflecting upon. The, the, the next slide, please. Um, for the continuous entrepreneurial discovery, um, there, are, there are three items that we, we have thought about, that we are working upon, we are reflecting on. The first is how to get framework conditions right for entrepreneurial uh, discovery, experimentation. And here, there are a lot of interesting new instruments that we have. We have regulatory sandboxes that have been starting to be used since 2017 in many, many countries. Uh, we have to build upon and, and, and expand and, and learn more from the clusters. Um, we have to uh, look into going beyond just working on grants to work on blended fi financing and there's a lot of experience from that starting with the Juncker plan in 2014 but even before that um, we have to work much more on community funding and how citizens can be involved and engaged in this process through a different kind of a crowds for sourcing and others and then of course uh, linking to, to uh, demand uh, also with public procurement for innovation, which is a, a tricky beast uh, that we all know and, and I'm sure that you have experienced before. The second item there is that when you have the framework conditions, you have to incentivize actors for change. And there are many different actors of change. And now with the new post-COVID or even the, the new way of working digitally, there is also the, the digital nomads, uh, persons that we would <clears throat> perhaps want to attract to, to a local ecosystems. We have the new role of universities. There are marvelous things happening in the world of universities. 
with the European university initiatives, the KICS, uh, EIT KICS are growing, the entrepreneurial university. There's a lot of things happening where university can have a, a new uh, a role as, as actors of change. Um, and then there are the possibility and learning from public-private partnerships, etc. And the last thing is somehow how do you how do you put in different kind of innovations, experiments, demonstrators, and, and product portfolio um, in inside of this context? Uh, so these are the three elements we think. And the last slide, please. The next slide. I I, I will not be too long because I also want to 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 listen to you. Um, the, the policy learning uh, in the smart specialization, we have the mutual, you know, the, the monitoring and evaluation. It's been very much focused on the, the national innovation system, the regional innovation system, somehow the, the supply part. And, and, and we, if we work on, on systemic innovation, we have to be broader. So the policy learning has to learn from the systemic change, the change in, the, in, in an industrial system or in a societal system. Um, and one of the issues, and that's different kind of indicators and a different kind of learning process. The first thing that we uh, believe is very important that we, we, we start with what you want to achieve. So it's a result, it's an impact. You start with the impact and then you work yourself backwards. And you make sure that you set the targets and the indicators and the benchmark to be able to, to measure uh, in, a, in, a, in a timely way progress and also non-progress. Um, we should also involve much more um, the end beneficiaries of the product, uh, end beneficiaries of the, of the systemic uh, change. These are the persons or the institutions that will really be constructive uh, and critical uh, or, uh, and make uh, also our administration, our policy makers uh, accountable uh, if we are moving or not moving towards the right uh, 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 and finally, there has to be some kind of a, a lean, lean mechanism of, of policy learning and also a, a learning of the organizations, of institutions, of public administration. So in our policy process, we were able to, to pivot, like, like they say in, in the basket uh, world. No? Um, and, and that kind of early warning system signals could be both if we are working in the right direction, if we are achieving what we want, but also that no one is falling behind. And, and to be able to address uh, the societal and social inclusion aspect uh, as soon as possible and, and, and of course anticipate it as well. So we make sure that we, we are all on board on this and, and, and no one is left behind. So I, I will leave it there. Uh, um, this is my, my last slide, so I'm, I'm very much uh, looking forward to listening to you and to learning from your project. And congratulations um, again for, for this very timely and, and, and constructive process. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Johan. I hope that you hear the applause. Very uh, loud applause here for your speech. Thank and you. uh, for the audience, we have the QR code for Slido question in case you want to post it. Uh, you can scan it or you can put the number code 294108. 294108. So that is the question, uh, the, the place for putting question. But Johan, I already have the first question I received here. So, for the next generation of S3, how do you see the integration of RI into S3? So we try to solve this question in our projects and several similar projects by looking at sustainability and co-creation with a variety of actors. But in your opinion, how do you see what all the elements of RI can be integrated in S3 next generation? So that's the first question and I'm waiting for the next question. Yes, please, Johan, if you have anything to share with us, or you want to receive all the questions at one time. Do you hear me? Um, yeah. Yes, I, 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 I prefer, yes, I prefer to, to, 
to take a, a number of questions, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we will try to collect all um, different questions, and then we'll send to you at the same time. Um, I hope that you have put down your question in Slido. And Julia, would it possible for you to share the question with us? So another question is about the learning concept that you mentioned, that public organization and institution need to understand the concept of learning organization and become a learning organization so that they can it reflect what's going on and also to integrate um, the new anticipation of, for the future scenario in their way of solving responsibility. Um, how could it be happened in public organization when the system is complex and also a lot of level of hierarchical? Um, what, what is your view about this? And then another question is about okay, S4. I yeah. So the difference between S4 and S3 is the element of sustainability. Is that all, or is there any other difference that you see um, would be a totally new generation of S3? Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll take these three questions, and, and, and um, many thanks for, for them, and if, if you have other reflections, um, I'm also very, very interested, really genuinely interested to, to take everything on board. Um, first of all, perhaps the, the RNI, um, you know, somehow the, the basics of all this in our reflection is that innovation is no longer an end in itself. Uh, innovation is, is, is a mean, uh, and we even think that um, we should move towards uh, an innovation-driven policy, a policy where innovation can somehow drive and set, uh, respond to the policy uh, needs that uh, you may have, uh, much broader than, than just in, in the field of, of uh, innovation in the field of science and technology, in the field of industrial development, but, but in, in all societal issues that, that the government is facing. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a way of working on innovation uh, that makes it more linked to a purpose, um, to, to achieve something which is um, based on values. So the, the, somehow the, the role uh, let's say in the in the field of digitalization or in the field of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, in the field of, of uh, um, um, industrial development, um, competitiveness. Um, the the role is also for public policy to 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 work on values, and I think that's where we can learn a lot from you. Um, the second uh, response to that is also that the. And I'm sure that you are all working on that, and you know it much better than me, but the, the, the way to perceive innovation is, in, of course, in a very broad sense. So it includes uh, social innovation, it includes, it's a combination somehow of, of uh, social innovation, technological innovation, organizational innovation, new business models, but also uh, public sector innovation, as you referred to also in your second question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, frugal innovation, uh, which is also very important in these times. So we don't make sure we make sure that there are also um, affordable solutions that, that, that is put forward. Um, and innovation is, is, is in that sense also, I think, linked to to um, to the way you perceive it in your project. I hope. Um, but uh, uh, I, I, I am looking forward also to to learning more from your findings and, and to see how, how we can include that yes. uh, also in our own thinking, you yeah. know. Um, for, for the learning organization, yes, you're right, you know, it, it's very, very important, uh, we know that, but at the same time it's very tricky. Uh, um, I think, sincerely, after, you know, working 24 years in the European Commission, 
Uh, I've seen a great move since I started until now on uh, using um, evidence and, and evaluations much more, much better. It's much more serious. There's a culture of taking that seriously in the policy making process. In when we, we create new regulations, when we create new policy communications, uh, when we create new um, funding programs, um, it, it's not uh, superficial, it's not taking uh, for granted. It, there is a real uh, cultural change. So it's very much about culture, it's about uh, culture in the public sector. Um, and and, and um, that, of course, uh, is related to institutional um, change. So um, the work on public sector innovation, I think, in this context is very important. Um, we started to, to collaborate with OECD on that for 10 years ago. And there's an interesting also can, uh, observatory in OECD on public sector innovation, OPSI, which is also useful in this process. I, I think we, it, it's, a, it's a challenge, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, it's worthwhile. We, we need to make yes. sure that, that uh, we are based on evidence, but we are also flexible and lean. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the business sector are, are doing that. And sometimes, you know, we, we learn a lot from them. They are very visionary in, in certain aspects. Um, on, on the new items of, of S4, it's true that sustainability, you know, the directionality is one of the new items, mm. uh, of course. And that changes everything. It's not just to put a, 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 an S in the end. Uh, it yes. changes a lot of things. It, it, exactly. it's, mm. it's a new way of, of, of working. The second thing I would say, uh, and that is linked to what it changed, uh, we are trying to go from an uh, approach perhaps um, um, linking to the paradigm shift uh, from a national uh, innovation system to system innovation. Mm. Um, that is in theory, of course, but, but it has implications. So um, this is the translation of that paradigm shift. Uh, so it's, it's not to say that uh, it's not important to work on a national innovation, or in this sense, a, a regional innovation system approach, to make sure that you have you work on the connections between actors in an ecosystem, you work on the clusters. All that is important, and and it's it's something we we should continue to reinforce. But at the same time, we should embrace the new system innovation thinking. So radical innovation, if we talk in in the traditional terms, is when you are able to change a whole system. Mm -hmm. That is radical innovation, really. So, uh, to respond, it's to put a directionality, but it's also to work in a different manner. Uh, and, and, uh, and the devil is, of course, in the details. So, that's also where we really would like to learn from your project and your experience in the Thank regions. You. Yes. Well, Thank thanks. you so much, Johan. Uh, we will definitely send you the result of what we found in the city projects. I also received another question for you, but I prefer to send you uh, later so that you can um, send us an email and then we can uh, add it into the Siri website so people can uh, understand more about the concept strategic autonomy. So that's a question I received. But due to the time uh, constraint, I would like to thank you so much for being with us and to share uh, the new direction of S3 and your knowledge and experience. So thank you again and I will catch up with you online later. So everyone, I hope you can give a big uh, big hands for Johan. Thank you. Thank you.